Welcome to this rather unusual video of mine, in which I will, with the help of attachment theory, try my very best in an effort of psychoanalyzing myself, my former self, who I think I am, and strive to be. I wrote a little intro for this video and I'm gonna read it to you now. We are all products of our surroundings. Some of us had a rather rough childhood, distant and maybe even abusive parents. Others not so much. They've experienced love and trust on a whole nother level, a healthier level. The results of different upbringings vary greatly. The way we act in certain times, particularly stressful times, how we carry ourselves, how much or little we think about ourselves and others, how we deal with closeness, trust and love. Are we distant, angsty, mad or furious, depressed and sad? Do we handle what life throws at us? Are we strong enough, not only for us, but also for our loved ones? Are we able to deal with problems in a healthy and constructive manner? Or do we turn to drugs and numb ourselves to bury the pain? Attachment theory deals with all those aspects, theorized by John Bobley throughout the 1900s. In the field of psychology, attachment theory now gains more recognition, more than ever before. Emotional attachment is a very natural and basic human need, just as, as existential and necessary as the need to eat, drink and breathe. Allow me to explain further what attachment theory truly encompasses. Attachment theory deals with the style of attaching. There are four main styles of attachment. And it is globally studied that the population consists of 50% secure attachment, 25% preoccupied, 20% avoidant, and 5% disorganized attachment styles. I'm going to elaborate further on these four attachment styles in a few minutes. Attachment, attachment, attachment style theory deals with the orientation you have in your attachment. The way in which you cope with threats through attachment. The way you ask for love, the way you deal with loneliness, the way you deal with closeness. It is very important to understand that these are not scientific categories, like the difference between gas, solid or liquid. These are psychological concepts that are based on observation, self-report, opinion and culture. Based on a model of human development and behavior. A model of understanding, a theory. Ways in which people cope with emotional and attachment difficulties. There are spectrums you can't categorize people. Very important. And one of the most important things is they can change over time. So secure attachment is considered the healthy one or the only healthy one of these four attachment styles. Preoccupied and avoidant are considered unhealthy and damaging. Disorganized attachment is the most, most unhealthy and worst of all. It's basically a combination of preoccupied and avoidant and having all these statements that I'm about to read cranked to 11 on both sides. And uh, yeah, these people have it very rough. <clears throat> so now for the whole past week, I've been listening to the Psychology, Psychology in Seattle podcast by Dr. Kirk Honda. He has a special out about attachment theory that is 17 hours long and divided into six parts, focusing on John Bobley's theory and work from throughout the 90s, 1900s. I think I mentioned that before. I made a deep dive into attachment theory and listened to some of these parts multiple times and wrote down all statements and their associated attachment styles and reflected them onto my former and current self. I will go through, I will go through what applies to me or has applied and if anything changed, what changed. I wanna finish and resolve my past, understand myself better, and most of all, become a better person. For the people I love, for myself, 
And if this somehow touches you in just a slight way, maybe it'll even help you get on the right path for a better world for all of us. Let's begin. All right, so let's start with the first attachment style. Preoccupied attachment, also known as anxious, ambivalent, resistant, dependent, borderline, passive aggressive, or histrionic attachment style. Now note that not all of these terms have to match to a person to be described as a, a preoccupied attachment style. However, they help you to get a rough understanding of what we are dealing with here. And as I said, everything is on a spectrum and could bleed in with each other. You can never categorize people. However, these are the terms mostly used uh, together with preoccupied attachment style. So I believe you guys can see my mouse cursor this time. Yes. On the right side, I have a few brackets here. For one, it says PA, which stands for past. PR, which, which stands for present and then a Y bracket. So within the PA, I'm gonna tick off the boxes if a certain statement was true or false for my former self, for the past. True is then gonna be in a green box with a T marked with a T. The red box says uh, it's a false statement. At least it does not apply to myself in the, in the past, for example, in this one. And then uh, the yellow ones are a FT as in false true, where I was unsure of how I would answer this one, or I am divided in the answer that I have for it. And uh, yeah, so the Y bracket is here for if something has changed from past to present, what made it change, why it would change, and just a little bit more of a elaboration on this aspect, or statement rather. Okay, so let's begin. Parents of preoccupied children are inconsistent with their parenting, alternating between some affect, attention, affection, attunement, and none. Uh, absolutely true in my case. I remember very strongly in my past that my parents were... Um, I, I was actually very scared of my parents, of both of them. Both of them would beat me. They would beat each other. Mostly it would be my father beating up my mother. I'm going to go into a little bit of sensitive topics here, and I'm want to issue a trigger warning, maybe you guys experience the same thing. I have dealt with this and and talked about this many times. That's why I can talk about this freely like I am right now. It is still rough, but I know I can get through it and I hope you guys can stay, can stay tuned for this. Uh, anyways, uh, as I said, I remember this strongly. My parents just uh, giving me either some affection or zero affection, attention, and um, yeah, it was it was very rough for me back then. I was very confused every time um, I would have to deal with my parents. Both of them were also working at the same time. My grandmother had to raise me. My grandmother lived with us in the same um, apartment. And uh, whenever I would interact with my parents, then them coming from work i'm i was never sure if i should if i was happy or mad about it i definitely was scared every time because it was just uncertain of of if i if i would get beaten again or not and uh, it was a it was a messed up thing but uh, more often than not i would just feel dread and um, yeah just very very bad memories about all of this as children learn as children they learn they have to pay close attention and be very watchful and communicative because of this inconsistency yes because this inconsistency i have learned that i have to use or make use of the time that i have the good times that i have with them make use like as in a fruit that i would have to squeeze so hard until i get the last drop out of the fruit i have to completely maximize the time that I would have with them, and communicative, um, and communicate whatever I was needing, although I was scared of really telling the truth, and also just uh, listening to them. Uh, just because I knew that they are gonna be gone or not pay attention for me, uh, to me uh, in the next 
in the ne the next time or the, the uh, you know the next day or whatever. So whenever I would have the attention from them, I would just really make sh make sure that I'm ears. And this uh, has not changed throughout all my life. I have noticed it multiple times that when I would uh, talk to people, I would really give them give them a, a, the time of my day and. Uh, yeah, I would just, it was just very important for me because I was scared, unaware of it, of course, that they, you know, if I would care about them, that they would not be there for me the next time to listen. So we ticked off uh, both of these boxes in green because this was uh, definitely true for my past. And uh, in, in present, of course, I don't have to deal with my parents right now or anymore. So there is nothing to tick off here. The attachment behaviors are turned to 11, very sensitive. So this is basically a statement about all the statements that you're reading here. And it just says that everything that is brought up as a statement and applies is really cranked to 11. So it is, it is really, really high impact and very true. Uh, I, just, I just put the false true in here because I didn't really know how to register this one. Uh, however, I can, make, I can see it making sense a lot for sure. So. Preoccupied attachment style people interpret things much more severely. Yes, I would interpret everything that happened to me much more severely, especially, let's say, just arguments. I would interpret them as uh, the end of the world, for example. And um, definitely not anymore. Um, currently, it's, it's been a very long time since I've been, you know, worried about something like this. Um, just because of the of a sole fact that I now see the see the point of view from the other person as well. Let's just say to, to make it easy um, in an argument. Yeah, I just basically I just respect the other people's situations much more, or I I just have a sense for it for it right now, and I fully respect it and understand that it's not only about me, but it's also about the people that I would argue with. So they have a different point of view and. It's just not about me, and um, yeah, you have to, you just have to walk into the in the shoes of another person to un to truly understand them. Okay, so it is said that there is two types of preoccupied attachment. Uh, one type is being hyper vigilant, uh, vigilant of rejection, communicate communicative and noticeable uh, about rejection. Uh, yes. Uh, very true for my in my case that I would be uh, I would feel very offended uh, about rejection and I would definitely communicate it by screaming or you know shouting getting becoming very mad however nowadays it's uh, it's different again and I would definitely speak my mind uh, about how I feel about this stuff right now in order just to get to a you know to settle the point or um to be to get closure and uh, you know uh, find a solution to to a problem the second type is to be passive aggressive be nice and not express anger and and be secretly very angry so this was like a false truth for me back then it depended on the person and, and i guess the situation but uh, I, I can remember stuff like this happening where I would just, you know, not talk about it and just not express my emotions. However, nowadays, as I said before, um, you, you will know that I'm angry at you. If I sh should be angry at you, you, you would know that I am angry at you. So this definitely has changed as well. They don't think of them as worthy or lovable. Um, so this was true, actually, in this red here. Uh, definitely uh, it ticks as green for me here. Uh, I had a sense of being unworthy and unlovable just because they gave me the sense of being unworthy and unlovable. And this went on for a long time, deep into my 20s, until uh, I managed, until I realized and, and managed to start loving myself, I suppose. So nowadays, definitely, um, 
this, it has changed and I am and I have the feeling that I am lovable and I have love to give. No high self-esteem again combined it's definitely it's just like the point before uh, I had very very low self-esteem uh, not only emotionally but also physically I would just be like a skinny guy uh, small skinny weak and um, my parents would also lo they would make fun about me for my situation of being that skinny and stuff I remember everything they said to me about it and the most issue I see about this, just thinking back about this now and getting a little bit mad again about this, is they would just hammer all these um, all these bad thoughts into me, but never would like offer any help or tell me how to do it better. They would just uh, critique without any, you know, any help, zero help. So this definitely. Um, has also changed. Um, I have a smaller ego than before. At some point in my life, probably a little bit before COVID broke out, I actually went ahead and I put aside my ego completely. I was on like a, some kind of self-finding trip, trying to completely get rid of my ego. And this was a very, very bad situation for me, actually, to, to be honest. I would never uh, suggest anyone doing that. I was trying to be like a all love and peace kind of guy. But a healthy ego is is so, so important for you, especially in a world where there is... I can, I can just talk about Germany in this case, but people here, the general vibe is very, very dark, uh, very unhappy, unfun. And if you go through life, Without an ego here, people are just gonna step all over you. And uh, yeah, it's definitely something that has changed as well. So uh, I do have self esteem now, but I do also have a smaller ego than before. So that is definitely the case. Uh, I never, they never feel good f enough for other people. Yes, this is true. This is exactly how I described before. And uh, it has changed. It is not anymore. I don't feel that anymore to be the case. In extreme cases, hate themselves having suicidal behavior. Yes, absolutely true. I was hating myself for a very long time. And I actually had suicidal behavior or suicidal thoughts since I know exactly when the, when the first time this came around in my head. I was, I think, 11. But uh, yeah, I had to fight a lot for, I had to fight a lot within myself to get rid of it. And I appreciate life now. And um, I know what was wrong and it has made it has changed everything. So attachment attachment theory, even though I didn't knew exactly what it was, I already had to deal with it. And this helped me a lot of just, you know, uh, appreciating life and appreciating everything that comes with it. The good and the bad. So yes, but not anymore. They believe everyone else is untrustworthy and unloyal. True, I thought that's to be the case back then, but I do not anymore. I've met people the, that I can trust and I believe there is a good amount of people that are good. And therefore, this belief has definitely changed as well. Everyone that loves them will eventually leave them. Yes, that is the case. that was also the case. And again, uh, just as the points before, uh, this has also changed over time. No one really cares about relationships as they do. Yes, that's exactly how it was back then. And I just thought it's all about me and the world resolves about me, but uh, no longer the case. They have a pre pervasive feeling of worry and nervousness. I think pervasive was like an everlasting, right? Nervousness about close relationships. Partners will leave them, something bad will happen. Can be terrifying. So I never really had this um, back then because I just didn't really think about it. I didn't think about partners leaving me as I just weren't, I just wasn't in that many situations where I would have a partner that was able to leave me. And um, I have this feeling a little bit more now. 
but in a healthy uh, sense. So I, I don't feel terrified about bad things being around the corner or being able to be around the corner. But I am, uh, I am ready for it. So in a sense, I think it's a healthy view to all the stuff going on in the world and just knowing that there, there are bad people and there are bad people with bad intentions. Alone media will tell you everything else is bad and everyone is bad. War is all around us and uh, hunger is all around us. Financial crisis and all the bad stuff is coming together. But uh, I feel as if it's important to realize that these things are just as part of life as everything else and you just have to be ready for it. Not terrified, but, you know, acknowledge it. They will complain about distance and lack of commitment in their parents. Push partners to move in or marry. Move fast in relationships to feel secure. So back then I would be the complete opposite. I would be very autonomous and very um, self-sufficient and I would also want this from my partners as well. I would um, I would get a little bit, not mad, not angry. I would get a little bit disappointed, though that is not the right word as well, in people who would be a little bit more needy in this kind of thing, having to be together all the time. But I am also, I'm an extremely loyal person, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever cheat on somebody that I love. And therefore, it would never cross my mind of having of being that one person that is to be worried about, you know. And so I reflect this upon the people I love, especially on the partner that I would choose. And I would just expect the same thing and not anything else from them. And uh, that is definitely a, a mistake. As everybody is different, of course, but uh, most of all, um, you just have to, you just have to, if there is a issue, of the sorts, you just have to work on giving them the security and uh, making them understand your position. So what did I type here? More for our sake than mine. So nowadays it was, it, it is definitely a little bit, um, I definitely feel a, a little bit more about this. As in, uh, I would complain about distance or lack of commitment from, from my partner, but it would be more for our sake than for, for my sake alone. You know, it would absolutely be unselfish. And just because I know that it would help the relationship as a whole, and therefore, you know, I would appreciate it more. As adults, they come across as needy or clingy because they have starved for secure attachment. So, in, as this is a statement about adults, uh, there is nothing to be ticked here for the past. However, for the present, I ticked this as a green true, and I typed love. <laughs> so this is, I guess, the definition of love, uh, or one of the definitions of love that I have. It is not really a neediness or clinginess, though I really um, appreciate when I could be needy or clingy, as I said again, it's not it's not a really a neediness or clinginess. It's just it's just a feeling of love that I have for my partner, and and I love the back and forth of just loving each other. And maybe the honeymoon phase just lasts much longer for me than anyone else, but um, I really like it, and um, that is how it is. So they often seem needy. I was trying to not seem needy at all and didn't want to be needy at all when I was younger. And nowadays, just um, to reiterate the point of, uh, of before, the love thing, uh, I guess I am a little bit needier now. And uh, they, seem, they seem dependent. So back then, I would not be dependent at all. And I would, again, I guess, seem a little bit more dependent nowadays. They can be demanding. Not always. True, I would always demand, as I said, perfection, 
to be like like I am or you know just uh, demand more. However, nowadays uh, it's absolutely no longer the case. I just respect others and know beforehand what you get with. If you respect others and you know what you get in um, beforehand, then there shouldn't be any issue at all. And for the sole reason of respect for others, you should be you should be good in every relationship, pretty much. And uh, if something is really off, then talk about it. Often stubborn. Yes, I was stubborn as AF when I was younger. And I'm not anymore. I, I suppose I just matured a little bit. Can blow up seemingly, seemingly random over random things. Not always. Yeah, I would blow up about random things every day. Just be uh, histrionic and, you know. I guess I didn't have anything better to do than just uh, to blow up. But that's something that is a trait that I got from my parents because they did the same. So I just thought that's how I, how I behave, I guess. And it was very subconsciously, but it was who I am back then for sure. They are very easily hurt and get angry very easily. Yes, that's exactly how it was back then. However, I am more chill now. And I, it takes a little while to hurt me or get, get me angry nowadays. So definitely changed in there as well. Obsessed with relationships, love addicted. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I, as I said again, uh, I'm a romantic and I always have been. My favorite book for a very long time was Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I didn't really grasp the concept of two stupid teenagers just doing stupid things. I would just fully romanticize the whole story and uh, the drama that comes with it. And um, I guess I am love addicted. I've always been a romantic, as I said. Text often and expect quick answers. Back then, I would never expect quick answers, and I would get mad at people who would expect quick answers from me. That was like a, a big deal for me back then. Nowadays, uh, it's like a middle thing. So I would love to talk to you and would wish for a fast answer. But it's okay. If you can't, then I get it. You have something else to do. And if you truly love me, you're going to talk to me whenever you have time. So it's fine. It is nothing that has to, you know, that has to be instant, unless it's, a, I guess, a emergency, but that's, that's another issue. So it is, it is not in an extreme matter. However, nowadays it's absolutely not, I'm absolutely not judgmental. As I said, I have respect for others. I really realize that there is just other people with other brains and they have other stuff going on inside their brain. So I'm not judgmental at all. And uh, also, like, the way you look, might give me a little bit of an implication of who you are, but I would never, I would never bet on it. Let's say it like this. And they are impatient. True. Back then I was very impatient. Nowadays, it's fine. Give it time. Highly promiscuous. Yes. <laughs> Back then uh, it was a crazy time for sure. But now, nowadays, um, trying to settle down. What to settle down? I can just. Um, Brush it off as puberty, I suppose. <sighs> Frequently in crisis, often talk about crisis, highlighting drama. I would always avoid drama. It was back then and nowadays. Um, just something that I didn't want to have to be part of my life. And I would see it as, as a waste of time. And I would see this as something negative, And I was smart enough to avoid it. Although there, there is a time and place for drama, a, a certain type of drama, anyways. But uh, yeah, I, I would just avoid drama completely. And um, especially from, from myself, I would not try to burden people with my drama. Yeah, that's all I can say to that, I guess. Just avoid drama. Histrionic hand or face gestures. I mean, that's, that's how I... That's how I'm trying to convey my thoughts whenever I cannot convey them correctly and uh, get my points across. Uh, whenever I'm out of words, basically, or vocabulary, um, I would try to get my hands in, in with gestures 
I think it's just a natural thing and nothing you can condemn people about. And uh, it's true. It's been like this before and it's been like this today. They have a harder time hiding their emotional state. Um, harder time hiding their emotional state. So I think I swap this around. Because back then, yes, for sure, I would have a very hard time of of showing my real emotional state. Wait, how do I understand this question? Just a second, guys. Harder time of hiding the emotional state. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's fine. So this was correct. The way we had it before. So hiding the emotional state. Uh, false. I was I was very good at hiding my emotional state. However, nowadays I think about it differently. There is no point in hiding it. You actually the only person you're damaging is yourself. There is no point in hiding it. So work on it. Talk about it. They have difficulty soothing themselves. I think I always had a good sense of soothing myself. However, back then it was more of running away, avoiding. And um, nowadays it's it's different. For sure. Gotta vent some. I, what did I wrote here? Gotta vent sometimes, but call me too. So, the, if someone would ask me this question, how would you soothe yourself nowadays? I guess I'd do it with just by working out, which, 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 which would be my vent. Um, if I wouldn't be able to do sports, not really sure how I would vent or calm down. Definitely not in a matter that would be. Um, Damaging to other people. Maybe a little bit more. Be a little bit more to myself, and think about it. Not really sure. As I said, I got I got sports right now. It's keeping me afloat. Become intensely jealous. Yes, and nowadays too. Yes, I don't know. It's jealousy. What's the song? Yeah, what can I say? It's I get jealous very fast. But they don't trust their partners. Back then, yeah, I would not trust my partners, especially on distance. And just because I was not feeling worthy of anything, I would pretty much think that they would leave me for if somebody better would come along. And this is a like self-perpetuating cycle of feeling unworthy and then showing expressing this as well when how you carry yourself and then therefore it actually comes to reality you know and so it's like a it's like a vicious cycle but uh, i would always try 100 percent. i would always try and i know this is how it goes and i know how the, the jealousy bleeds within this how it intermingles with this uh, statement I know it exactly, and from very early on, I knew it. And uh, I, I knew that the only way for anything to work is just trust. So I would just try. And that's that's how it is. They would have worse communication, true. Nowadays, no more. Just talk to me. Or I would talk to you, don't worry about it. <laughs> you will know. Poor conflict resolution skills, true. I would just avoid it. I would just run away and uh, hide or. Get occupied with something else, you know. Uh, nowadays, again, just talk to me. Obsess about ex partners. Yes, true. And I guess it didn't change. <laughs> there is only one for me, anyways. And I guess I'm obsessed about her. They would have unstable relationships. Yes. And it has not changed until today. So. As I was uh, not in a situation where I could see if this is deviating nowadays, I can only say yes to back and then, uh, back and now. Intense relations, high drama, true, back then, always high drama and everything that happened. It was fun, I guess, at some point. Not really, but you know what I say, like, 
you know what I mean? It's yeah. Hold on, it's getting very dark right now. Let's get a little bit of light in here. Hopefully, it's better. Uh, nowadays, I would ad avoid drama, uh, as I said, but uh, not in an unhealthy way. I would just try to keep it at bay and really see if there is a necess necessity to it and if there is other ways to resolve it. Uh, they were, would be interested in other people. True, I would always be interested in other people, but I also learned the value of other people and their opinions very early on. And this does not change. Look at that right here. Values in other people's opinions and lives. Yes. Uh, I'm just an intellectual guy, I suppose. And very nerdy when it comes to stuff like this. I just always want to learn something and I would obsess about everything that interests me. And people are just a good source of this kind of stuff. So I have realized very early on that um, they have valued opinions, that I value their opinions. And the more I grew and matured, even more I appreciate it. So I would, you know, if if there is someone talking to me about about something new and interesting to me, I will <laughs> I will talk about it for a long time, and I will ask all kinds of questions, and uh, I would feel stupid sometimes of how stupid my questions would be, but I have a feeling that uh, they understand that I'm I'm just generally uh, generally interested in it. Make other people's feelings feeling heard. Yes, I would be a a huge asshole. I can't explain it myself. I just hurt people a lot. And it was mostly because I couldn't really convey my thoughts in a manner that would make that would not make myself vulnerable at that point. And uh, I would just be an asshole. My my surroundings, everybody was an asshole. Even the friends I had were, were assholes. Everybody just treated each other as an asshole. So I did the same. I feel very sorry for this. If you're watching this and I know you and you know me and um, you have a bad thought about me, me being an asshole, I am deeply sorry. I, it was never my intention. I was I was who I who I was. I I can only accept that, yes. But I I am just truly sorry and I deeply apology. It's no longer the case. I'm I'm having a lot of respect about other people's feelings now and it would just never happen again. I would just think about what I'm saying and how it would make people feel. And there is no reason to make other people feel bad about anything. Never. Seek reassurance again and again. Yes, back then I would always seek for reassurance, day in, day out. But uh, nowadays, I guess I put the yellow box here for false truth. I guess I still seek for reassurance. But not in an unhealthy way, rather just a nice to have kind of way. I don't really know how to to explain it. It's just it's just something that's nice to, nice to have. During com conflicts, more sensitive escalate conflict. Yes, as I said before, I think a point a statement before was quite close to this one. So this has been the case back then, but it's no longer. That's definitely that's definitely true. Next. Anxious in dating and speed dating. I guess it depends on the person and the situation. Uh, I've wrote spectrum here. Yeah, it's. I guess I am. I was. I'm not really sure. Report more fear of being single. Back then, I didn't really care at all if I was single or not. Nowadays, I really don't want to be single. Just. Not for the sake of, of being single, but just because I know there is a person that I would love to have in my life. And that is all there is to say about this. Put a lot of energy into romantic relationships. I would not care at all back then. Even though I was a romantic, I just wanted, I just wanted the romance to come to me and not really put effort into it. Nowadays, I would move mountains. All my heart and all my might, all my power. Try to make it work. <laughs> I wrote it's fun because it's fun. <laughs> Remember f things worse than, than they were. Honestly, I, f I thought about this a lot and it happened to in multiple situations. I want to say that this is not the case, that I always remember everything 
as best as I could or try to remember everything as best as I could. And I always like every detail and everything the exact way that it happened. But I am not sure. Also, the last 10 plus years for me have been a very big blur. I have been avoiding life and gotten into a deep depression over the past 10, 11, 12 years. I was uh, using drugs and playing video games to cope. And um, therefore, my, my memories are just washed right now. Uh, pretty blurry and honestly, I cannot really say. However, I'd like to say or like to believe that it's not the case. I'd love to say that I can definitely remember things as they were and that's, that's all there is to, the, to this, I guess. So, let's see. For this preoccupied attachment style, which is one of the unhealthy and damaging attachment styles, I have uh, written down of how much of a percentage applies to me. And for my past self, I would have a 60% uh, 60 of these statements would apply to myself back then. So I was very much on the side of preoccupied attachment style. Very damaging, very unhealthy, and I know it. It's exactly how it is here. There is nothing to sugarcoat it. This is who I was, 60%. 27 facts of these all facts um, picked green, as in true and only 14 as in false. However, nowadays, for my present self, it is significantly lower, with only 36%. However, I'd like it to be lower. I still feel very happy about this result, having ticked off only 16 boxes of all of them. And um, I think it's a, good, it's a good step. It's a big step in the, in the right direction. Uh, I want to stress that I did not lie or try to manipulate any of these results. Some of these questions I've spent a lot of time thinking about, just trying to make the, the correct call on them. Because the only person that I'm cheating here, if I would cheat, would, would be myself. And I am absolutely no longer about this. I want to better myself, and this is, this is the result. So. I guess I'm still in the in the camp of preoccupied, even though it's much lower than than in the past. Uh, I guess there is a a little more work to to be done. All right, let's go for, to the next attachment style. So a second attachment style. I want to talk about the avoidant attachment style, also known as dismissive dependent anxious avoidant, pathologically independent, narcissistic, obsessive, and schizoid attachment style. Uh, once again, not all of these terms have to be matched for a person to be called having an uh, avoidant att attachment style. However, you get the general idea of what we're dealing with. Um, for example, it is called a narcissistic, avoidant, narcissistic attachment style. I have to say for myself, I never had a narcissistic tendency, never in the slightest had not narcissistic tendencies. I would always live for others, do for others, as far as I feel like anyways. And um, just, just really never had this narcissistic thoughts as well. Uh, later in life, I was trying, like I got, a, I got an advice of somebody just to be a little bit more narcissistic, just to, you know, better myself in terms of putting my needs before everybody else. Uh, I tried that and, and what I've got through it definitely helped in terms of putting my own needs before everything else. Just, just in, you know, stuff like, uh, just like food eating. I know it sounds silly, but I, I like, I, I would have uh, episodes of where I would like not care about my diet, not care about my sleep, my work, my school life, just to please other people, you know. And so in this kind of sense, the narcissism would help. But again, everything else that comes with the, 
with describing narcissism and with it just uh, is absolutely not in my nature. Same, same goes for sadism or um, what's the other thing? Or masochism. So I guess I was always like a happy-go-lucky kind of person or deep within myself, I guess. And uh, always trying to always trying to please other people. All right. Uh, let's go through the, the points of uh, avoided attachment, the statements. So they tend to be parented by consistently distant parents. Uh, true, my as I said before. So, so I have to just uh, mention real quick again. As I said, everything is on a spectrum, and you might see some statements of avoided attachment uh, overlap with the preoccupied attachment, and it's only natural. Uh, many of them share the same tendencies, and um, that's, how, that's just how it is. So, tends to be parented by consistent, uh, consistently distant parent. Yes, true. Once they were physically um, distant, as I said, with the work, but then also emotional, of course. So, that is what happened there. Um, they will be shamed for their neediness by parents. Every time I would be shamed, and then I would be made fun of for my neediness, and then I would be compared to other people, like, oh, this guy, like, your friend is not as needy. They wouldn't even know them. They would just say, like, oh, this guy, this guy is not that needy as you are, or family members and this and that, like, always, every time. There is not a single time I can remember this not being the case, where if I would say something or, like, express a need, I would be made fun of or, you know, be shamed for. Their parents will never ask for help, sign of weakness. Yes, that is true. I remember my parents would always say we would never ask for help. Um, it's they, the most important thing for them was just to be to be better than everybody else. Their status was the most important thing. How people think about them was the most important thing. I have very bad memories of how this affected my life. Of how I had to to be somebody else or behave in a certain way just to please them and uh, mostly other people. So absolutely the case. Uh, there's two paths of distant parenting. There's one path is the distant and abusive, which was the case for me. They would be distant uh, working and emotionally, and then they would be abusive at the same time, which is a horrible mixture. Would not wish upon my biggest enemy. And then the second path would be consistently distant, but loving. In example, parents that would be working, but then again, when having the time, they would love their children, which was sadly not the case for me. They decide early in life that everyone else is bad. So as I said, I would always think about I was the bad, I was the fault, and everyone else was good, and I would be the problem. So never. They turn off their avoidance system completely. They're good on their own. Yep, that's how I thought back then. I was good on my own. I don't need anybody else. And uh, it's no longer the case. I feel like I am human, and I and I desire emotional attachment. I feel like this has changed for sure, and it's just no longer the case. They are in their own world. Yes, absolutely. I was in my own world back then. I am no longer in my own world. I deal with the real world, and it is very rough and hard. I had to deal and face with a lot of demons from the past. I had to apologize to many people. That I've wronged and I confronted people that wronged me. Especially in the last two years, when I think I finally beat my depression for good. And um, yeah, it's going great in this uh, in this aspect. So no longer. Don't engage with other people. Uh, back then, I, I think I was okay with engaging with other people. Uh, what did I say here? Not if not necessary, but no problem now. Yep, exactly. So nowadays it's just no problem. Uh, I can engage with other people. But I can talk to other people if I have if I if I see strangers on the street and I need to know the time. I have no problem um, approaching them or something. Stuff like that. I I guess is what they mean. Don't respond warmly when given affection. True. That's how I was back then. Ice cold, a real asshole. I wrote, it's been a while, yeah. It's been a while since I've gotten affection. And I would no longer um, be that cold again. 
defensively downplay or exclude things from their own awareness, as in I am fine. Yep, exactly. I would always be fine. I had tons of issues, but I would not talk about it. Nowadays, I mean, just look at me. I'm making this video for the whole world to see. And just because I think it's important. So it's no longer the case. I don't really need people, is what I think. Yep, exactly. But no longer. Avoid vulnerability at all costs. Yep. It was very, very rough. Um, trying to be, you know, trying to act cool and and stuff. But I thought that, that was the right thing to do. I absolutely don't no longer think like this. Have trouble saying you hurt me. I need support right now. Again, expressing feelings. Absolutely a no-go back then. It's no longer the case today. Shameful of their own avoidance. Not that not all. As in, I don't want to burden anyone with my problems. True and still today is true. It's always been like that. I can't really turn it off. Especially nowadays because I know people have their own issues and their own problems. I believe that this has... This has... How do I say? This has really tightened, this thought has really tightened and become concrete in my mind of not wanting to burden, just not wanting to burden people with my problems because just because I know that people have their own own issues. And back then I just didn't want to to do that in the first place without any reason behind it. So it's always been like that. Yeah. Tend to write write people off fast. Um, as I said before, I think there was a, a similar statement. No, I don't really uh, write people off fast uh, nowadays uh, either. So it is always like a, how do you say, not a second chance that you can give people, but just a, a different angle that you can watch people at. From on a day by day basis, stuff can change. Extreme loneliness, I guess so. I mean, deep within myself, I was always lonely. However, I had drugs and wrong friends to keep me occupied. That's why I guess I put a yellow box here, where it's a uh, false true. And nowadays, yeah, I am extremely lonely. I have you guys chat. I'm streaming a lot, I know. That is like the only socializing I'm doing. I have two very good friends from my... Oh my God. How long do I know them? 25 plus years, I suppose. Two very good male friends that I am um, in touch with, but I can't really, you know, it's not the same as before. Uh, they have family, they have work, they are very engaged with what they're doing right now, and uh, it's just different times. So I do feel lonely in this sense. And the relationship thing comes on top of that, so it is how it is. They do everything on their own, yep, and nowadays it's the same thing, just because, again, like the statement as before, but uh, I'm just used to it, I guess. They are hard to figure out back then and, and nowadays, I guess, I wrote down and I guess, I guess. Hard to reach, yes, and nowadays as well, probably. It's something that I would have to maybe put a yellow box to, especially on my present self. Because I believe I'm open to getting reached out to. It just hasn't been the case lately. They're dedicated to their career. Absolutely not the case back then. I didn't really give a damn about my career. Career has something to do in my mind, first of all with money, yes. And then afterwards, it, it's like self-improvement, getting good at something, really mastering it. Which is nowadays much more important for me. But the money aspect, I was very traumatized with everything regarding money. And I just really never wanted money. So therefore, I didn't really want to work for money. And it was a whole other problem that, that I have had. Growing up, growing up. It's, it's a different thing nowadays. I can talk about it. And maybe I'm going to make an extra video about money. And I'll just elaborate up, upon it in much more detail. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a big one for sure.
if I if I happen to do so. It can be very responsible. I don't think I was responsible at all back then. <sighs> On some occasions I tried. I don't know if it was pride, maybe. However, nowadays I understand how important it is to be responsible, especially if you have a if you say you will be responsible. Breaking your word is one of the worst things you can do. And um yeah, actions speak louder than words, that's for sure. It can be overwhelmed with negative feelings. Feelings. It's always been like that. I guess it's a habit. I could be feeling feeling good, and then all of a sudden I would just, you know, have this wall of negative feelings come crushing down on me. It's, uh, it's something that has just always been like this. And I'm working on, I guess I don't really know how I should work on it. It has something to do with the with all kinds of problems that are surrounding us in the world and uh, i talked about this briefly before in the statement where i said I'd, i'm just ready for for negative stuff now so when thinking of when having when getting these kind of negative feelings i also get out of it much faster nowadays that's for sure I can blow up randomly with rage absolutely true back then i was a rage ball getting triggered by everything and could blow up randomly absolutely no longer the case a real rage attack i didn't have in a long long time you have to make me really really mad and i i swear to you it's gonna be deserved if i'm mad at you so that's yeah it can become extremely angry and wanna control just checking uh on the time right now and the battery of my microphone. They can be become extremely angry and want to control. Yeah, I would get extremely angry and I would want to control because if I wouldn't control, then it would get even worse. But this is no longer the case. Gotta let it be. You gotta control yourself and make a change by changing yourself, I guess. It's what is my belief nowadays. They can, they can become very narcissistic. Uh, I mentioned it before, never, never was the case for me. Learn that when in doubt, just shut down. Yep, that was my go-to back then, just shut down. No longer the case. I am tackling the world with everything, all the shit they can throw at me. It can throw at me and it is how it is. I'm, I'm working on it and I think I'm on a very good way. Attracted to mindfulness and meditation because it seems like a good solution with their problems. To become stoic and turn in, inward often back. Yeah, I, I was thinking like this back then. Also, one of the things where I was trying with the, with my ego is one of those things. And um, so there was a time I wrote here. There was a time for sure. There was a time, but nowadays, no longer. As this is also something you do f just for yourself. And I want to be more connected with people, especially my partner. And I think. Uh, it has a less place nowadays. They often avoid conflict. Absolutely true. No longer. You deal with conflict. You're an adult. And uh, it's for the better for everybody. There is no other way around it. And there must never be another way. It can be very nice, but very distant. I guess true back then and nowadays. I said yes. I, I'm always trying to be nice. But I, I catch myself being distant sometimes. Sometimes people in the chat when I would stream would come across in a weird way where I would respond in a weird way, which could seem distant, let's say like this. And uh, I, would, I would recognize it, I would register it, and then think about it. That's all there is to it, I guess can be very annoyed with other people's needs. Yeah, back then, as I said, I was so autonomous and would and would just expect the same of, of everybody else. And I would just get annoyed if somebody had the need to for closeness, you know, when whereas I would not have that, that need. And that's absolutely no longer the case nowadays. Have difficulty suiting themselves. So I said true, true, and I went with sports. We went over this before. Did I have a fault on this one before? The soothing. 
Yeah, I had a false false. Gotta win sometimes. I guess it's a true false for me. It's something I have to really think about. It's not it's not in a damaging way, that's for sure. Where is the point now? All right. The expect relationships will fall. Yeah, that's how my whole life was going. However, nowadays I don't believe so. Especially the person I'm in love with. I think we have a lot of potential. And um, I believe. I believe. They expect to be hurt in relationship. Yep. Bit to the point before. No longer the case, at least. I'm going, I'm much more hopeful. Might suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out. Yeah, true and true. But I don't think you can fault me on this. It's just only because I know how, how crazy the world is. <laughs> okay, how do I explain this one? It's a fear of missing out in a matter that I know how fast the world moves. And I know how much I am interested in everything, basically. Or a lot, let's say. And therefore, I'm not really sure what they would apply this fear of missing out to exactly. But if you keep it general, I do have fear of missing out. And I just, I just do want to be part of stuff, you know. But um, I'm going on about it as an adult and with a, with a sense of having more time. Of dealing with stuff it's just when you know there is a train that's about to leave and you know if you don't jump on it right now that you will be left behind and there is no way of you catching up and it's just a feels bad man but that's all there is to it there is another train coming and you just jump on top of this one so it's a give and take and um yeah as i said you can't really fault me for this i, I don't believe they believe uh, they are the distant one in the family. Yeah, that's how I felt all the time. I always felt like I am the distant one. I am the one odd one out. But in reality, everyone, all of my siblings, I have two sisters and a half brother. And all of them are messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's how it is. It's sad. But we are some messed up kids, let me tell you. I often avoid situations that are that activate their emotions. Yeah, that's how it was, and it is no longer. Develop beliefs that romance is dead, not not interested in love or sex. Yeah, back then, it was the case, I suppose. Even though I was a romantic, I would have a manic, opposite thought sometimes, and I wouldn't be interested in love, sex at all. Uh, they keep their hopes low and stay reserved or distant. Back then, for sure. Nowadays, it's like a middle thing. Yeah, it's more of a habit kind of kind of thing, and more on the reserved side rather than distant nowadays, for sure. Just because you have to be ready, as I said, and not so naive anymore. Because you know things can go wrong and. And it's not, not that easy. Life is just not that easy. Let's say it like this. They exhibit less affection and emotional expression. And it's like a middle thing. I wrote, hmm. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. It depends. It depends on the person I'm with. So I, I know for sure I would not have any issues nowadays of doing that. So I guess you can tick the screen. For the present, at least. Left self self disclosure. Yep, I would absolutely not talk about what I am talking right now to anybody, not even in private. <laughs> Nowadays, we're making a YouTube video about it. It's okay now. Display less openness. Same things. Stand or sit further away from people. I mean, back then, I I, I remember there was a certain situations where I would just you know be distant, even though I was in a group with people. And nowadays, I'm not really sure. How it would be however i don't i do not have an issue thinking about it i would not have an issue being close to people 
less eye contact, absolutely. I was also told by my first uh, work or employee, is it called, that I would not have eye contact, which was bad. And nowadays, it's absolutely not the case. I'm trying to have eye contact, contact as much as I can. I find it very important for people to have eye contact with me as well. And it's just a window to your soul. That's all you have to know about it. Just practice having eye contact, guys. It's, it helps a lot getting to bond with people, understanding people. And it's just very important having eye contact. Not having eye contact with somebody can make them feel unheard, can make them think different about whatever you said, even though you, you meant it in a different way. Less vocal pleasantness. Yeah, true. Back then, I would not uh, express pleasantness vocally. And no longer the case. It can seem like they're not interested in a conversation. <sighs> it's like a middle thing again, but I tell you, I will tell you if I'm not interested in a conversation. And I will just say I, I cannot talk about it right now or I don't want to talk about it. So that wouldn't be an issue nowadays. Seek less support, support in times of stress. Yep. And now no longer. Nope. Uh, I can mention that I am seeking therapy right now. I already have my first appointment. And the therapist said that in order for us to prepare for this first appointment, I should write down what I'm doing um, to, to combat my situation. And one of these aspects is just doing what I'm doing right now and making this video. And I thought I'm, you know, while doing, while writing all this stuff down and thinking about it, working on it, I was thinking, why not make a video? I think it's going to be interesting for some of you people and you might uh, get something from it. Can seem uncaring and apathetic. Yep, that's how I was back then. Uh, like a middle way, I guess. Um, and no longer nowadays, that's for sure. Uh, again, uh, if I would not care, I would tell you. More likely to engage in casual uh, sex uncommitted. Yep, that's how it was back then. And no longer the case. Nope, I just want one person. Less likely to form a committed relationship. Yep. And I almost lost my life about it. I definitely lost my heart for more than 10 years. <laughs> no longer the case. <clears throat> no rebounds after breakups. Yeah, that's how it was. I would not go from, from breakup into relationship. I always needed a lot of time in between. That's how it was. Unstable relationship. Yep. Every time throughout all my life. And uh, lately, I guess, not if I can do something about it. But also, I like the relationship for a long time to be able to, to assess my Yes or no, right now. Difficulty remembering their childhood. As I said, not really. I do remember my childhood quite fondly. They are more intellectual. I mean, I guess I am. I'm a pretty big nerd. I love to obsess about things that interest me. As you see, like this, for example, it's very interesting to me. I write everything down. This is not the only work I've done to this. I've listened and read upon a lot of more stuff. And uh, I might come back to it later. In this presentation make it look like everything is fine yep i was that was me back then however no longer i have this maybe yellow so yeah i'm not looking i'm not trying to make anything look look good anymore it's the truth is the truth and you get what you get with me but probably you're gonna most likely know about it and I find it's very helpful for myself to speak about things like this. And that is the new me. So for my former self, avoid, avoidant attachment style really, really rang home. I would have 78% of all these statements would apply to me back then. However, for the present, for, for how I feel right now, drastically reduced to only 26% which is a huge step into the right direction, into the person I want to be. 
into a secure person. And I believe I'm on the right way and seeing these numbers as well as on the preoccupied side is a, is a, a little bit eye-opening as well. I knew that I was on the right path. I dealt with this for a long time now, but getting deeper in the, into this topic, as I said, it's a little bit more eye-opening and I like it. I get the feedback like this from working on it, on it myself and it definitely um, helps. So I'm, I'm very happy with uh, the results of how I place basically in this little test. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I was quite a messed up kid. And apologies to everybody who loved me and I couldn't love back. Now it all makes sense. I'm sorry. It is how it is. Not gonna show a code anything. I think we're on the right path. Okay, before I get to the secure attachment style, I mentioned um the fourth attachment style, which was disorganized attachment style. I will not go about the disorganized attachment style as it does not correlate with me. Having an, a disorganized attachment style would inherit of you basically ringing true to all of these statements, cranked up to 11, as I said, not only into the, in the preoccupied, but also in the avoidment uh, department. And then both of them combined would make a person that is a that has a disorganized attachment style. And still 5% of the global population has this attachment style. These people are suffering greatly. They are in terror, minute to minute. They have been abused as a child, not only physically. I'm not sure if I can say the word without YouTube getting to me or banning this video or something, but you can just imagine the ho most horrible things to you happening as a child. And this is what happened to those people. And thankfully it has not happened to me. And I guess I, I got out before it got too late sort of deal. I don't really know the right expression. Ich habe noch die Kurve geklickt, we say in Germany. Let's talk about a secure attachment. So this is who I'm striving to be, who I want to be for myself and for my partner. And I have been on the path of becoming this sort of a person for quite a long time now. But again, getting more involved with this in the psychology and all that is uh, surrounding it, it, is a, it just opens a new door for me in which I can really try to step in almost as a physical door and really work on it much, much better and yeah, get to my, get to the destination. Secure attachment, also known as autonomous attachment style. Basically autonomous just means you're self-sufficient, but not in a, in a bad way as in you don't need other people. It's a, in a really, really healthy way and in a good way. And auto autonomous, a happy life. All right, so they experience low levels of stress as children. <laughs> of course, this does not ring true for me as a child. By the way, you can see a lot of red here in a secure attachment department uh, in the past for me. So let's just go through these points real quick. The caregivers were sufficiently attuned, sensitive and responsive. Nope. The child would have a secure base. Nope. I think we can go through these points a little bit faster now that we have, now that we have the base of the, of more rather the contrast of how it's not supposed to be. And I talked about that, so we can maybe go a little bit faster on this one. So the child would have a secure base. Nope, I would never have a secure base. I would never have somebody to go to when, when everything was done, when everything was said, when I was, when I was having to come home because it just 
would just get too late. I would dread the, the thought of getting home. And I couldn't wait for the next day where I could leave home and uh, start all over again. So I would never have a secure base. And uh, now nowadays, I guess my my secure base is myself and view chat. My YouTube channel, my Twitch channel, and what I made about it, what I made of it. They would have better relationships. I can imagine that. For me nowadays, I'm working on it. Lower rates of depression, anxiety. What a nice life it has to be. <laughs> I think, though, I weathered most of the storm. Higher self-esteem. Not in my case. Nowadays, much better for sure. Won't need therapy, probably. Well, here we are. We'll manage rejection better. I do manage uh, rejection better nowadays. Back then, it was absolutely uh, unhealthy the way I did dealt with it. We'll react to conspiracy theories differently. Okay, so I put a yellow box on here. Hear me out. No matter where I am, no matter what somebody tells me, I could believe it just because I know the world is crazy. So I know everything could be the case, but I also know it does not face me. I believe in all kinds of conspiracy theories as much as I do not believe in them. It is a, it's a weird yes or no question for me right now, where I think I'm dealing with it in a very healthy way, and I can see why why you could ask such a question, because there is people that are, I don't want to call, I don't, don't want to mention names, but I, I know people that are really, really, really deep into conspiracy theories, and those those theories, they really get a to make a toll on their life and make it make their life much, much worse. And every time I would see them and they would ha have to talk about this, I could, I could only avoid the, the topic and I feel sad for them in all honesty less likely to be addicted so i was very addicted back then i was addicted very early on to to drugs smoking weed at some point i took ecstasy lsd i had to drink alcohol be high all the time just to numb the pain not get the shakes and um, throughout COVID, it became less and less when up until a point where I, I never needed it ever again. Shortly before the lockdown ended, I decided to not take any drugs ever again, not, not even drink alcohol, and I've been going great with it. I'm not missing it at all. It is exactly how I was thinking it's, it's going to go the way. And, and that is that I'm dealing with my problems right now, that I am dealing with all the demons that I have, and uh, I do not need drugs to avoid anything. There's a tons of stuff that happened for, to me in the last two to three years in my sober time where I, I could imagine getting back on drugs or my former self would have been getting back on drugs immediately where I just did not do it. I would endure the pain and I am very much proud of it. And that's, how, that's who I am right now. And that's how I'm going to be. And uh, drugs recreational or not are uh, maybe a fun thing for me nowadays, but I just wouldn't, wouldn't see the the time and really the reason to take them. I much, I much more love to be just clear-headed and, and not uh, diminished in any way. So it is what it is. I would I have to say, I'm, I would not say no to marijuana or, or beer in the a, in a, in a perfect setting. Let's say it like this. However, this perfect setting to a cure would have to be something magical, really. But then if it's the right people, the right person, Maybe. Fully recreational, absolute zero tendencies to getting addicted. And in reality, the addiction that I had really, I, I think I beat because I just know it was, it was not a physical or even um, mental addiction to the drug itself, but just really to avoiding my problems and having an escapism. So, I, don't, I really want to stay as humble as I can, especially in pursuit of becoming a better person and with dealing with this and um, working on these kind of statements. 
but I kind of want to say cured in this department. It's a rough topic. What I said is how I feel about it, and you can take it for what it is. Better emotional intelligence. Back then, I don't think I was emotionally intelligent at all. Nowadays, I absolutely notice myself evolving into this emotional intelligent person, and I absolutely know how to, how to deal with people's emotions now, how I would react to them, how to read them, and ultimately how to apply it to my own life, which sounds weird, but just in the, in the interaction with other people. So I definitely absolutely feel highly emotional intelligent nowadays. Better is socializing. It was like a 50-50 back then, I guess. Depends on the people, I suppose. But nowadays, absolutely no problem in socializing with other people. Better social cognition, just knowing about what's going on is also a, a term, a sense of emotional intelligence in groups and just your, your awareness of what's going on. I think I was always good in this, in my surroundings and knowing what's, what's going on, but mostly just, I guess, because I come from such a stressed situation where I would just be aware every time and nothing would, uh, you know, go by me without me uh, register, registering it. Learn life skills from their parents. They didn't teach me anything. When I'm thinking back about what my parents taught me, they have not taught me anything but feeling bad for myself. They would only point at my mistakes, but never tell me how I would better myself. Absolutely toxic, and it's like in a movie, dude. It's like, thinking, thinking back to it, I'm like, how did I deserve this, I'm thinking. They didn't teach me anything. My grandmother, she taught me how to read the clock. And I was so happy and thankful to her. And I still am. And um, I remember it like, uh, like yesterday. I remember it in, in huge detail. And nothing ever came close to this from the sides of my parents. So, yeah. They learn faster. I guess I was always a fast learner. I consider myself being a fast learner every, every time I go on about something. Have emotional attunement to other people. Nope, back then, not at all. I didn't want to connect with people emotionally. Nowadays, I do want to connect with people emotionally because that is our true selves. That is who we are, and it's important. Better psychosocial functioning, like work and school. My school life was horrible. I would skip school so many times. I was, I was always intelligent enough. I mean, again, I want to be modest and really humble about this, but as long as I can remember back, I got told by my, by my teachers that I was the most intelligent in school or in class. Every year, basically, that would happen. But I had something about me that would be just uh, destructive and I, would, I could not apply this intelligence. <sighs> just recently I made a psychological test over five hours, almost six hours, in order to... Um, so I, basically I applied... Let me rewind just a little bit. So I'm currently in the midst, in the midst of self-employment and working on my own business. Therefore, I applied for a loan to help me kickstart all of what I'm trying to do. In order to get the loan, the people I tried asking for wanted a psychological evaluation of mine. So I had to undergo a test like last month or so. And uh, I would come out like all kinds of psychological tests. Um, or, you know, what's it called? Uh, in intelligence tests, IQ tests, and um, with a lot of psychological aspects, I would come out over or above, um, what's the word? Above average. So again, uh, it's, been a, it's been a long time since I got told like I'm very intelligent or whatever. And because I also I just wasn't in school for all this time now. And just listening to, to the 
results that the psychologists went uh, about about me just uh, you know remembered me of my chi childhood and how it was back then so uh, yeah all my psychological functioning back in, in school and work all the intelligence was for nothing because i was just a mess <laughs> as you saw in the attachment styles before so nowadays i believe and i want to believe i do better i apply myself better i use the intelligence i have better and uh yeah that's the difference for sure better quality of romantic relationships so we went over this a few times now back then nope nowadays i'm not really sure because i haven't been in a relationship um in a long time but i will do my, my very best that's all i can say the trust that others will care for them i didn't have that feeling at all back then nowadays i will trust it so it's probably the case they assume that they are lovable and others are capable of loving them it was not a feeling that i had back then nowadays i do believe that i am lovable and that i have love for other people as well and that other people care for me so it's a it's a huge shift in my um, awareness in my perception and it's a good it's a good thing it uh, makes you a little bit more at ease and at peace with the world, I suppose. They can cope with negative feelings like hurt, rejection, shame, and anger. Back then, nope, not at all. Nowadays, much better. They recover much quicker. I mean, this is relative, right? However, still, same thing applies here again. Back then, nope. Nowadays, has changed for sure. They tend to have effective ways of coping, like seeking support. Wouldn't disclose anything to anybody back then. And nowadays, yep, I'm seeking, I'm seeking support. I'm having an appointment with the therapist now. I'm talking to you guys about this. I don't believe I can do anything else in this regard to get to this goal. They are more, they are more engaged with other people, more extroverted. And it's like a 50-50 back then, I suppose. But nowadays, for sure, I'm mean, just streaming alone or t talking to other people about stuff um, that is so highly sensitive. And personal, you know, I do feel safe doing it just because I also feel distant to you guys because I'm in my safe space right now and we're just doing this over the internet. Still, it takes a lot to open up like this. They're warmer and more compassionate. Yep. <sighs> Did not apply back then, does apply much more today. I would say so. At least I hope I do. I am. They're open to experience in life. I always was. Apart from my depressive times, where I did, really didn't want to interact with anyone and for anything, I think this was always the case. Little to no hostility against others. Yeah, I'm really not a hostile person. I really am mad about my, on my, about my parents, though. And I think this is going to be the, the biggest topic I'm going to talk about with my, my therapist. It's gonna be my parents and how I'm I how I'm able to or if I'm even able to to forgive them. As I said, I confronted them with a very poor outcome. Very poor guys. So that is something that is a whole chapter that I'm gonna open now again and I'll keep you updated. Less violent. More self-disclosing. I think we went over these before. So more positive about past relationships. I mean, I try, but there wasn't much. So <laughs> yeah, so much for this. They have larger so social support systems. Back then, I wouldn't have any, but drugs probably you could say. And nowadays, it's just a very small circle of people: the friends I mentioned and my little sister probably. They are better parents, so does not apply to my former self, of course. Nowadays, though, let's go into this a little bit. I believe that just by talking about this and reading up on it, getting to know about these attachment styles, I believe just by doing this alone, I am already breaking the cycle. I am already above average in parenting skills. I am for sure, for sure 
much, much, much better than my parents were with me. I do not have children and I never really had to care, take care of children. So I can only say what I'm thinking about, how it would be. And I have the deepest respect for all the parents. And I, I know that I could never say this is an absolute. And I would never even dare saying it. Of, I would never say a statement like, oh, parenting is easy or something like that. I want to just make this very clear. However, I think I would be very well equipped in case I would get children to convey my feelings and their feelings in a way that is constructive and healthy and secure. And just by dealing with this whole ordeal now, I believe I'm on the right path and, as I said, well equipped of raising a secure and healthy child. The relationships are mutually beneficial and happier. I hope so. They are more committed to their spouse. I was not. I am now. 110%, 120%, 130%. Infinite percent. They're more likely to provide consistent memories and judgment of childhood. So I guess that's something that, that I had always, as I said before. They have a greater sense of self-worth. Back then, not at all, but we went through this. And nowadays, yes. They believe their own, they believe their loved ones, their loved ones will be there when they need them. It's not a belief, it's a, it's a fact. I know my sister will be there for, for me when I need her. She always tells me she loves me so much. I love her so much. And, um, and back then I wouldn't think about this at all. But this has changed for sure. They want to be close to other people. It's, a, it's like a 50-50, but more on the no side for back then. Especially just the closeness part of it. But nowadays I want to be close to other people, especially to the people I love. And going over all these statements for the secure attach attachment, I was so happy when I saw the result of my, my present self being 82% secure or, you know, this is not really a test. It's just going over the statements and seeing if they apply to me. But I think 82% compared to 16% my former past is a huge improvement. And I'm just mega happy and glad about this. And it just proves that I have been working on myself and it uh, reinforces but I've been thinking about this and I'm going to keep going. And I like where it's going. It's uh, something that I'm doing for myself. And uh, I know it's going to benefit the people I love. So I'm all in for it. And, uh, and I'm just really happy having, um, having 82% of these statements hit home for me. So in general, you can say I'm, I'm very big on the secure side nowadays. I do have avoidant tendencies. Hopefully, and I really want to speak from my heart, hopefully it's no longer in a damaging way. Um, at least the points that are, that are negative here, I think I can work on much easier than anything else. And as for the preoccupied, uh, I guess we have a little bit more to work on. But again, maybe these statements are also left on the easier to deal with side. At least that's what I'm hoping. At least that's what I'm feeling about it. So overall, I'm, I'm feeling very good about this. And um, this is exactly who I want to be. And uh, not only have I, have I gone through these statements and see how they apply to my former past and uh, especially my, my present, but I also took a few online tests um, of, of attachment styles where they would just ask you a bunch of questions and in the end you would get a result. Most of these pages, if not all of them, 
wanted money afterwards and they just give you the results and uh, wanted like a deep analysis would cost 15 to 20 bucks or something which of course i had to decline however i think uh, you can draw or strengthen the conclusions of these tests and let me show, just show you i did three tests and in the first test i did i have to say though it was only a dozen um, questions so probably not as accurate it's not an excuse i definitely stand to what 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 has been given here as an answer but i, I believe it was not uh, the best test it was only a dozen questions a little bit more than 10 questions and the uh, attachment style that came out for me was preoccupied this attachment style may block you from building solid lasting connections you may feel uncertain needing re reassurance in close relationships you might be intensely jealous or suspicious suspicious of your close ones it also means that you are likely to need your loved ones to constantly tell you that you are loved worthy and good enough i mean all of this rings home or hits home but it's stuff that i'm working on and uh, i don't believe it's as um what's the word for it i don't believe it's as, as intense as back then and that i've gone quite a quite a long way so far but still it's something that we can work on i suppose so you might recognize these you need constant reassurance and attention your self-worth may depend on how you feel being treated you can get overly fixated on other on the other person and you struggle to rely on your partner as i said we went into this in detail and you can make your own assumptions all i can say is it's true but also i am aware of it and i'm working on it and i believe I'm dealing with it in a healthy way and ultimately I'm gonna I'm gonna reach a destination of security and uh, there's not many pieces missing in the puzzle so this again a um, a quiz that I took online with just a handful of uh, questions I, I don't really think it has to say a lot let's see the next test I did the second one was a little bit more questions i would say like uh 30 40 maybe and um the outcome was very nice it says your attachment style is secure everything else that came with this uh, description was just uh, like okay so you now pay money to get more infos about it i'm fine with the with the result um it reflects who i want to be and who i think i am mostly nowadays so this is the outcome and then I had uh, another test, which had 77 uh, questions. That was a quite long one. And then again, so for this one, the longest test I took, uh, I called myself Baba in the test. Um, again, I got a secure attachment style. And so this was a very, very long test. And I would, I would say the last one, so the last test I did here was the most accurate, I believe. And... Um, and yeah, let's go about what they say here. Keep reading to learn about your secure attachment style and how it impacts your relationship. Does this sound like you? You're a warm and friendly person who feels comfortable in long-term relationships and has a strong sense of self-worth. I would say yes. You're good at communicating your needs, feelings, and opinions to others and have a strong conflict resolution skill. Absolutely. You can set a healthy boundary. You can set healthy boundaries and avoid situations that don't deserve your time. Yep. You get frustrated with poor communication and when some when, when others struggle to express themselves yes I, I would also see this could also see this as a negative point but the way i would react to it would be positive so overall it's a, it's a good thing you see the problems as solvable but sometimes your partner doesn't i mean i suppose at least i hope i'm strong enough for both of us you don't have a problem with long-term uh, commitments in relationships i have one person that i love and I will love forever and there is no problem for me to commit my whole life to this relationship and I, to this relationship and that's what I want to do that's why I, who I want to be you're an empathetic listener when your partner friends or family needs you yes I want to be and I hope I am so this concludes this presentation it was quite a long video almost two hours long now uh, it was a whole a lot of work. I spent all of my week for this, and I do not regret it at all. It's 
uh, if anything, this is just uh, scratching the iceberg of how deep I'm going to dive into this. I find it very interesting, very important, and just so uh, true. Seeing um, how these statements reflect to myself of my past opened a lot of... Um, it, it, it made a lot of, a lot of sense. It, um, it definitely opened my eyes to why I was behaving in such a way and who I was behaving to. And uh, I can only I can only see positives from this. The past is what it is. We cannot change it. We can only try to better ourselves, and that's what I'm gonna try and do. If I touched you in any form, I am very happy about it, as this really breaks the cycle, guys. This is what we need in life to have functional human beings and secure people to get rid of toxicity. And I find it so dearly and very important to talk about this. And I hope you see it, see it the same way. Yeah, so once again, I want to thank you for hanging in here for almost two hours. Uh, if you find this video, you might have found it by, you know, just by the tags that I'm going to include. It's a, it's a whole different video than I'm usually posting. I'm usually more of a gaming channel lately, I think streaming and posting a lot about my workouts and um, from now on i think i'm gonna go more into this materials and i just find it super fascinating and it's something that i would have pursued of maybe studying if i was smarter back then or have had the accessibility to it and just the knowledge but yeah um i think that's all there is to say for now uh, I made this video just as a uh, point zero in my journey of becoming a better person, something that I can always look back upon and uh, see how far, how much further I have come. I'm going to keep you guys up to date with this. You have seen me in my in a in a in a bad state at the start of the year and the uh, past month for sure if you have been running my streams. There's nothing to be ashamed, ashamed of. Um, it is what it is. I come with, I come with it, and you get what you get. It is as big of a part of me as I am talking to you right now. And uh, I just want to say thank you again for watching this. And um, that is all, I suppose. I wish you guys the very best weekend. Thank you so much for hanging in there. I will keep you guys up to date and it is what it is. We cannot change the past. We can only better ourselves for ourselves and the people we love. And as I said, it's very important, guys. So thank you once again and uh, please spread this video if you feel like you can help somebody with it. And that is all from me, from my side for now. We will come back to it. And uh, thank you. <laughs>